Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We are back, and today we're going to talk about something that every single one of you can do, um, and it's free, and it's effective, and it'll create... uh, tons and tons of real estate leads for you. And this is something that works in every market, every price range, every market condition. The only uh, time it really won't work is when it's super cold outside. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) So today we are talking about getting listings immediately without buying leads, without having a never ending drip system or paying referral fees. Every single listener can do this and it's called door knocking. Face-to-face, real conversations about real estate are highly effective if done strategically. And you know that face-to-face contact is far superior to any type of passive lead generation. So we're going to get into that strategy. And this is a four-part series. So we're going, or rather I am going to give you a little bit of boring information. But this really does, I think, encapsulate why face-to-face, you know, person-to-person, belly-to-belly communication uh, will always be preferred over anything digital. And I realize... That flies in the face of how many of you are communicating now. You're doing it all through SMS. You're doing it through, you know, messaging services. That will never, ever be as effective as actually talking to someone, looking looking at them. And I'm, you know, this includes Zoom. I mean, Zoom and video conferencing is some sort of, you know, halfway good or halfway bad in terms of its effectiveness. You guys know how that goes. A listing presentation, for example, in person is always going to be a thousand X more powerful, even if done poorly, than a listing presentation done really effectively on Zoom. That's just unfortunately or fortunately the way it works. Why does it work that way? Because as long as humans have been around, the amount of time that we've been communicating digitally through texting and whatnot is just a tiny, tiny little blip. So our brains, our physiology, everything and every way we operate is designed to have face-to-face communication. The only time, if you think about it in the whole ascent of man, the whole time, threw some Jacob Bronowski out there to try to impress <laughs> I you. I noticed that. You let it get by you, yeah. But anyways, during the whole ascent of man, the whole times that humans have been on planet Earth, the only time we've been doing things digitally has been just really maybe for the past 25 years, which is incredible. Again, I'm going to say this one more time because it's really important that you understand this. It do, it's not just a, a silly point. It's a really valid point. The reason that face-to-face communication will always be more effective is because that humans are designed to essentially receive information at a higher level when it's delivered person to person. Imagine if Julie and I were standing in front of you guys right now talking to you directly versus you listening to us or watching us on YouTube. You guys get it? See how different that is? It's effective, but it's not anywhere near as effective. There has been different studies that have been uh, done on this, but the amount of subconscious or subliminal communication or however you want to call it, the things, the messaging that people pick up from, you know, just everything, facial expressions, little nods, little, you know, just all the little uh, things that aren't necessarily spoken and when you're communicating with somebody makes up like 90% of all forms of communication. So when you're sitting and talking to somebody, your brain, your subconscious brain is, is uh, essentially listening through your eyes. It, your brain is watching to see what someone's mannerisms are. A lot of you have studied this stuff. You know, sometimes it's, I think, frankly, studied too much through NLP and all the rest of it. But the result is the same, that we are designed as humans to receive information person to person. If you know that, um, then what you should be doing is as much person to person communication as you possibly can do, because you will be far more effective at effect, you know, essentially getting the person to want to work with you, choosing you as their listing agent or choosing you as their as their buyer's agent. And there are lots and lots of stories of some of the most successful agents in the country who started their careers door knocking, who still continue to door knock. And I'll give you one that comes to mind just as I'm as I'm speaking here. Um, uh, David, uh, those guys that were on um, Selling LA, Bravo TV, yes. remember? Yes, I can't remember the two his last name right now. Yes. Yeah, one of them was Harris. I remember that mm-hmm. one, right? Mm-hmm. So they were on our podcast a long time ago. Yeah. They got their start in their career by door knocking very expensive areas, and they didn't even know the price ranges of the houses they were knocking on, True story. which is great, in LA. And I remember they said they were door knocking, and they knocked on like Lionel Richie's house, and he <laughs> answered the door or something. 
But moral of the story is, is that door knocking is incredibly effective. And we're going to give you a real drill down on why it's so effective. And please don't make the mistake of just assuming it's for new agents. It's not. It's for all of you. And as more people, as more of your competitors, frankly, lean into digital communication, the more effective in-person communication becomes because it becomes a lost talent, a, a, essentially a skill set that most people don't even bother mm -hmm. to create, especially younger people. They're not learning how to communicate face-to-face. -face. They're not learning how to position themselves for a, you know, essentially a sales conversation. Well, that's right, and the, that's one of the unintended great benefits of becoming a good door knocker is that you polish your skills every time you're speaking with somebody. Also, as we mentioned before, it doesn't cost you anything, so this is all good. But there is a right way to do it, and that's why it's a four-part series. This is still an overview based on you know comparing it to what you actually get in coaching. Now, remember, this is an overview, so if you want to have the whole drill down on our door knocking system, you get that free. It's included with Premier Coaching. Oh, did I mention it's free? You know, as in you pay nothing, and all you have to do is text the word Premier to four seven three seven two. Text the word Premier to four seven three seven two. And when you do, you're going to be able to join Premier Coaching 100%. What's the word? Oh, yeah, free. free. <laughs> and that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach. Premier Coaching, in addition to the daily, you know, you get a work every, I should, you know, really drill down on that, right? Mm -hmm. A daily workday semi-private coaching call, right? True. It's not on the weekends. Nope. But you get our real estate treasure map. You get scripts, objection handlers. You get the, the complete notes from today's podcast. You get the real estate treasure map, the 90-day massive action plan. Every single thing you need because of this market is included for free. So just text the word Premier to 47372. Or if you're outside of the continental United States, you prefer not to text, that's fine too. Just go to members.timandjulieharris.com, members.timandjulieharris.com. But the simplest, quickest, and the frankly, it only takes 22 seconds. Yes, I timed it to join Premier Coaching. A way of doing it is just text the word Premier to 47372. We'll text you back a link to join right now. Do that on your mobile phone. Just text Premier to 47372. We'll text you back a link. Click the link. Join Premier Coaching. Like I said, it takes about 22 seconds, and you are in Premier Coaching. This is the way forward that you have been looking for. You know the markets. I mean, this is a really strange time in real estate. One of the most challenging times in real estate for agents that don't have the skills and don't have a plan. This is the solution that you've been looking for. So text the word Premier to 47372 um, or just simply go to members.timandjulieharris.com. Remember when texting, message and data rates may apply. So let's get serious about door knocking. This is a four-part series. We're going to do four very specific points today to get you started. Starting with point number one, choose the right neighborhood. Now, a geographic location that you're comfortable working in and servicing and a great price range, that all goes without saying. But also, find out how frequently homes actually sell in that neighborhood. Use your MLS to run a history on the neighborhood that you intend to knock. Are there lots of sales and pending sales, or has nothing sold there in the past five years? I mean, that should be obvious to all of you, right? You don't want to door knock on a neighbor, uh, in a neighborhood that the home, like where Julie grew up, right? The house is there while Julie and I were selling real estate, never went for sale. <laughs> they they still don't. They the still... same people are the neighbors of our parents. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, well, and you have neighborhoods like that in your community as well. So probably not the greatest place to door knock. Nope. Door knock a place where there's a lot of sales velocity. Go door knock a place where, just depending on what price range you're wanting to focus on, again, copy David Purnell and I forget something Harris, mm -hmm. right? And uh, go to the most expensive neighborhood in your community. It all works. But you have to be prepared, and that's what point number two is about. Point number two, don't go empty-handed. Your job is to provide value so that people at the door will want to talk to you and people who you miss will be able to connect with you. Well, what's of value? Market statistics, for example, what's for sale? What has sold? What are the average days on the market? Again, we're talking about that specific neighborhood and any other important facts that you would want to know if you lived there. So create a one-page fact sheet for the neighborhood and print them for your door-knocking day. You can call it Bob's Pleasant Acres Market Report, unless you're not Bob. Use your name. Okay. <laughs> I bring a legal pad to take notes with. We'll explain what to take notes on on some of our next points. Or, you know, you can use your smartphone note-taking app, whatever works for you. And then, of course, have your pre-listing package ready in your car for when someone says, yes, we actually are planning on moving. It's funny you should pop by. And by the way, that does happen. Be prepared for success. Now, where are you going to get your pre-listing package? Of course, Premier Coaching members have that ready to rumble. 
If you don't know what we're talking about, we do have dedicated podcast series about the pre-listing package. There's so many side benefits from doing this type of work. The number one being that you are doing this type of work. In other words, you are having direct communication with folks and you're providing value. You're going to see and feel yourself taking action and that will have an amazingly powerful uh, you know, effect on your, on your mindset. So if you're feeling a little bit confused as to what direction the economy and uh, real estate's going, guess what? So are all the uh, folks that you're going to be knocking on uh, their doors. Bring the information with you. Be prepared to have real estate conversations. And remember, you will, you have to be prepared for the uh, chance, because it will happen, that someone's going to want to do business with you or someone's going to give you a referral. So make sure you are having conversations with folks which are designed to deliver value to them but most importantly are designed to generate business for you and one of the easiest things you can always say oh by the way if you come across anyone who's thinking about buying or selling i sure would appreciate it if you keep me in mind something like that or by the way who do you know who's thinking about uh, buying or selling in this market that we should be helping or i should be helping and if you really want to drill down on it you know now that i've got you um let me ask you who are the two or three people uh, that come to mind who are thinking about buying or selling that I could be helping in this market. In other words, give them a specific number of people. And again, you will be surprised how frequently people are going to give you the names of folks or they'll give you the names of folks through, you know, they'll follow up with you later as they maybe the next appointment they have are taking the kids to the soccer game or whatever. And they come across someone who just got transferred. And they're going to say, well, I just met this really nice realtor named Bob. And he just knocked on my door and gave me a whole bunch of useful information about what's going on in the housing market in our neighborhood in particular. And if you don't know what to say or how to say it, use the information we gave you yesterday on the podcast where Julie and I were giving you guys the drill down on what's going on in the national scene as far as real estate. But again, to Julie's point, point number two, don't go empty handed, drill down on what's actually happening in your local market, drill down on what's actually happening in the local housing market of the doors you're knocking on. That's right. So point number three, give the homeowners a reason to call you. Remember, you're not going to see everybody at the door. You're going to be leaving behind these flyers. So your call to action is for them to ask you what their home is worth in today's market. That's the free comparative market analysis offer. And of course, include some short testimonials in your abbreviated bio, along with your mobile number and your email address. Hand them the flyer at the door or leave it behind under their doorstep. Again, it's something of value plus a call to action. The something of value is what Tim just mentioned, the market stats, what's happening in the broader real estate market. You can talk about inventory, days in the market, but certainly the drill down on their particular neighborhood. And what's the premise of the door knock? Well, other than obviously to introduce yourself to them and let them know that you'd love to be of a service to them, the premise is maybe you're letting them know about a home sale. Maybe you're letting them know about a new listing, something that's coming for sale. You're letting them know about something that they're going to be interested in because they own a home in the neighborhood and is the uh, sale you know, or you know whatever the market or the transactional activity is is going to be a value to them you know because they're invested in the community so when you bring that value to them especially if it's not easily accessible online maybe again it's breaking news about a new listing or some off-market sale that just happened or something that's coming for sale. I mean, something that's coming for sale. There's a good example. And again, we give you all these scripts um, in Premier Coaching. But you could go and knock on the door, let them know about a new listing that's coming for sale. It doesn't have to be your listing. And then, you know, the premise is, hey, who do you know who's thinking about you know, moving into the neighborhood? This is your opportunity to pick your neighbors. Do you have any friends or family members you'd love to have live in the same community as you? This is your opportunity to let them know about this new listing, that type of thing. All these scripts are included in Premier Coaching. That's right. So point number four, we're going to give you kind of what I call starter scripts to get you going because you could go out the door today and start this door knocking process for yourself. So point number four, be conversational using a friendly script at the door. Now, Tim just rattled through several. The scripts are not difficult, but they are pretty specific. You know, you're not asking, do you know someone? You're asking, right. who do you know something? Uh, uh, who do you know who has a house to to sell or buy. Okay, so be conversational. Hi, this is Bonnie with EXP Realty here in Green Acres, and I just wanted to pop by and introduce myself. I'm connecting with everyone here in the neighborhood, and I'm just sharing a market update since everyone's talking about the real estate market these days. Who's going to say no to that, right? Exactly. Everyone's going to, and look, don't just hand them a flyer with all the information. <laughs> That's a rookie mistake. That's you being a wimp and trying to avoid actually having a meaningful conversation. Don't just give them a flyer. You're not walking around doing a public service announcement. No. You are giving them the information. And if they say, well, what's the information? Just give it to me. Well, and it's your notes. You're not going to just give it to them. You don't have a bunch of flyers that are going to be, you know, 
essentially uh, their excuse to close the door on you, which will happen sometimes. Obviously, people are busy; their lives are going on. You're interrupting them during the course of the life, but your uh, course of their lives. But you're doing it because you're providing something of value to them. So, if your mindset is, "Well, I don't want to do this; people are going to be rude to me," yeah, it's going to happen. One out of ten, probably, maybe one out of twenty. But for the most part, even if they start out being kind of rude to you, they're not going to end up being rude to you because you've given them something of value. And for the most part, you're going to be telling them good news about what's going on in their home's value, despite what's going on in the overall economy. This could be somebody who is under a lot of maybe personal stress. You don't know what's essentially going on in their lives when you knock on the door. But I do know when you knock on the door and tell them that they won the real estate lottery and guess what? You got the golden ticket because you bought a house three or four years ago. They're probably going to like hearing from you. They're probably going to think of you in favorable light. You guys get it? You know, so keep all these things in mind. Don't have a bad mindset about learning how to be a great communicator, which leads perfectly into Julie's next point. That's right. So then, most importantly, stop talking and listen to what they say, what their questions are, and how you can be of service. This can then turn into a version of the Ford script that stands for Family, Occupation, Recreation, and Dreams, where you ask if they've always lived here, where they moved from, where they work. Again, you're being conversational. And ultimately, it will come back around to a real estate discussion where you close with our favorite script, who do you know who could use my help buying or selling real estate? Or what two or three people should I be talking to about buying or selling real estate? And be ready to take notes. Before you leave, ask if they'd like to keep updated via email and get that email address. And well, most, yeah, email, really phone number. That's what you want. Yes. You want their permission uh, for you to start keeping in contact with them. Now, yes, making phone calls is more effective because you can do it faster, right? But it's more effective as far as time um, allocation and utilization. But it's not more effective in terms of actual communication, actually bonding and connecting with that person in a meaningful way. I, that all leans back into the fact that we're all designed at our core root level <laughs> to be face-to-face -face communicators around the fireplace, around the, you know, the bonfire. We're all designed to pass information voice to ear, not essentially digitally. The digital communication, the reason it feels essentially, you know, fake in a lot of ways or impersonal in a lot of ways. And we do a lot of it right in our coaching company, but we also do primarily phone calls. When you speak to someone in our business, this is the reason we do these live coaching sessions every day when you join Premier Coaching, because we know that most people are going to learn quicker, more effectively and connect at a higher level when they're looking at somebody, when they're talking to somebody. And the way we do that with thousands of you every single day through Premier Coaching is our daily semi-private coaching session. So keep that in mind. How do you prefer to talk to people? Well, it depends on who it is, right? <laughs> Some people you just prefer to just get a text from. But for the most part, nothing beats face-to-face -face communication. That's right. So, Tim, you touched on this a second ago. Another script for at the door. So you have a lot of versatility with door knocking. But another script for at the door is to find out what recently sold. Again, it does not have to be your listing. And if there were multiple offers, because even now with the changing market, 50% of offers are still uh, in multiples. It's something like 47% of the time there are more than one offer. Okay, so you can talk about the fact that the home sold quickly on Elm Street, but there are still five other interested buyers who would love to live here in Elm Street Acres. Whom do you know who is, considered, who is considering selling? Now, don't be surprised, shocked, or amazed. I, I know they are because I hear it on the, the daily live calls. They're, they'll be like, you're not going to believe what happened when I was door knocking. Somebody said, you know, I can't believe you're on my doorstep. I just found out I got relocated to Miami. I'm so happy to see you here. Why don't you come on in? Well, that's leaning back into your previous point. You've got to be prepared for success. When you have the opportunity to actually convert a you know cold door to an actual listing appointment, or maybe someone's going to buy something from you, don't screw that up by not being prepared. That really does happen. That's right. So don't you know get in your own way. And I'm going to share this with them too. Sure. There's been a whole bunch of studies done on um, who the most sellers will list with. Most sellers, and this will be no surprise to anyone who's been in the business for a long time, most sellers don't know really how to interview a listing agent. They don't know questions to ask. They really have no, you know, really level of expertise with choosing somebody to be their listing agent. So most sellers list with the first agent that they meet. Does that surprise all of you guys? Well, that's also true on the buyer side. People agent, aren't interviewing agents to be their buyer's agent. That is incredibly rare that you have that situation where essentially the buyer is not going to work with the first agent that they meet. So be the first agent they meet by knocking on the door. You're going to knock on a door of an expensive house 
where that uh, seller owns a homeowner. Own, and they know like 100 different agents. Uh, I mean, who doesn't? Like in L.A., for example, know 100 different agents. Well, it doesn't mean that they're going to use any of those agents because you're in front of them. You're solving a problem. You're showing the fact that you're proactive. You're showing the fact that you're active in the market. You're not essentially a secret agent. That is going to be a very powerful, again, subliminal message a form of communication to that seller that you're somebody that's different. You're really setting yourself apart. And here's a real shocker for a lot of you. Many of you know the door knocking is one of the most effective things that you can do because it does put you in an advantage in terms of communication like hopefully I've expressed effectively for all of you today. But that aside, the other benefit of it is it really does make you feel fantastic. Now, it, granted, if it's you know 14 feet of snow or if it's in the middle of Palm Desert and it's 137 degrees, well, then maybe – plan accordingly or earlier in the day <laughs> or go exactly <laughs> but for the most part all of you should be door knocking and not getting away from it so let's say it's you know five years from now and you're the number one listing agent in your marketplace and you're just you're essentially swimming with opportunity don't stop doing the things that got you to the point where you were successful so many agents in a market like this say things like well i'm going to get back to the basics why the hell did you stop because you were convinced that you had too many things going on you were too busy and then now all of a sudden, you know, market changes, your business changes, your cash flow changes, and you're going to get back to the basics. Never stop doing the things that take you, that made you be successful in the first place. It's kind of like, I think a good analogy would be, you know, you've been working out for your whole entire life and you're in great shape and you've stayed in great shape. And all of a sudden you say, you know what? I'm in peak physical shape. I'm going to stop working out. Well, what happens? You're going to lose. Let's say it took you 20 years to get to where you are now. Uh, and let's say you stop working out for six months, you're going to lose at least, what, five, six, ten years of your physicality because you stopped working out, you've gained weight. You don't, you lose faster than you gain. Uh, gaining true. anything, building anything in life takes a hell of a lot longer than you think. It's one of our points in our uh, best-selling book, Harris Rules, by the way. Mm -hmm. Anything worth, worth having in life is going to take usually five to ten x longer than you think it should. <laughs> really. Well, that's an excellent point it's about all things lead generation in real estate, but especially something like door knocking, where your mission is to be the agent that they already know when they find out that they're going to move, when they're thinking about moving, when they are wondering what their house is worth. And, you know, today in today's market, I think it's especially critical for them to be out there in the real estate wild talking about what's actually going on. Remember yesterday's podcast. We talked about the actual statistics. There's all these salacious headlines, you know, is the real estate market crashing, isn't it? Oh my goodness, there's so much more inventory and, you know, longer days on the market. Well, what does that actually mean in your hometown, in your market, in that neighborhood that you are door knocking? You've got to be the one that has all of that information because I guarantee you, virtually every homeowner out there is wondering what in the world is actually going on in the housing market. And when you answer that question, when you solve their problem, of course you're going to be the one that they think of when it's time for them to move or refer somebody. But that's way more likely when you are consistent. And that's going to be one of our future points is to not just do this now and then when you, you know, have a free afternoon and maybe you just want to roll into some neighborhood and knock 12 doors. That's not going to be a system for you. We're talking about how to do it consistently so that you get consistent results. So there be, for example, there's a door knocking script around to announce a new listing, to announce a price reduction or, you know, market repositioning as we're fond Invite of saying. Invite to an open house. Inviting them to an open house. There's a, a door knocking script that we have that's letting them know about a home sale. I'll tell you one of our favorite ones, um, and this is something all of you guys can use, uh, home sellers wanted. Um, you know, that's a great way of really spawning a wonderful conversation with a prospective seller or just a homeowner. And what you do is you knock on the door. And again, this sample of this flyer is on, um, is in premier coaching, but you give them a flyer. Uh, and the flyer is something that's going to have a conversation that's going to start out, you know, knock, knock, open the door. I'm working with a lot of buyers in the area. I'm, you know, the whole script is, it's not very long and you're going to give them a flyer. And it's going to be a list of the maybe three or four buyers that you or an agent, you know, have that are looking in that particular neighborhood and you're going to give a little bit of a description on it so they can actually kind of relate to the description of the person that's listed in the flyer buyer number one you know it's called home sellers wanted this is the flyer's name premier coaching members you can download this so uh you know essentially you give it to a seller and we by the way julie and i and many of our coaching clients have used these as inserts into local community newspapers that another very effective way of um, essentially disseminating the same information to get similar results, but not as effective as door knocking. So buyer number one, relocating from Phoenix, Arizona, family of four, 
um, you know, wanting to live in the, uh, Julie called it Green Acres subdivision, looking for a four bedroom, two and a half bath, up to 750,000, right? Uh, flexible on closing, uh, possession, whatever, right? A little bit of information, no names, no real specific drill down, just call them buyer number one, buyer number two, buyer number three, buyer number four, you guys get it? And then when you're talking with the seller, they're going to be looking at this flyer and they're going to be reading the profiles of these little buyers. And if you, you know, want to include pictures of the buyers, they're really going to bond with that. And then have them look at the pictures, have them look at the description. As you're having a conversation with them, you'll be shocked how frequently that's going to result in follow-up business because they are going to save that flyer. Yes. Okay. And here's, we have lots and lots of stories about that particular flyer with the door knock working. I'm going to give you a quick example. When we lived in Georgetown, Texas, in our neighborhood, River Chase, right? So there was the president of the homeowners association who typically, you know, if you're a president of an HOA, you're kind of invested in your neighborhood, aren't you? You're pretty much an enthusiast, of course. And he had been for several years along with his wife. We would see them all the time walking the neighborhood, walking with their dog. They would know everything about everything in that neighborhood, being that they ran the HOA, right? So one day you and I were out walking and we see a moving truck in front of Norm and his wife's, I can't remember her name, Norm and his wife's uh, house. And we thought, isn't that strange? We thought that they would live here forever. After all, they run the HOA. And so we ran into Norm. He was out there, you know, getting his mail or something. And we said, Norm, what's going on? He said, well, let me go inside. I'll show you what's going on. He went inside, he grabbed a flyer, it said, wanted a one-story home with that was wheelchair accessible. This was an agent letter who said, I'm working with a disabled veteran who is in a wheelchair. He is looking specifically in these three neighborhoods. He can spend up to whatever it was, but it's got to be wheelchair accessible and at only one level. And Norm said, you know, me and my wife got to thinking, we're not going to actually be here forever, and maybe we ought to help this guy out. So we just went down the street and bought a new construction townhome, and we sold our house, yeah. just like that. There was no sign Same in the yard. Day. There was no marketing. There were no showings. They sold it to the guy that was essentially advertised on the agent's flyer. No, so they were going to sell eventually, but the agent's flyer caused them to sell now. They found their because, motivation. Well, it's because it was an easy transaction. They didn't have yes. to prep the house. There was a buyer waiting. You guys get it. This is the amazing thing about being in the market when you're willing to be a proactive lead generator. Now, it, I, so many things are rushing through my mind because mm -hmm. we've had so many tens of thousands of coaching clients over the years that have built really amazing businesses from doing this type of proactive lead generation, not to mention the fact that we did a lot of it when we sold yes. real estate too. Guys, at the end of the day, when everyone else is talking about CRMs and drip campaigns and even videos and all this other stuff, as everyone is thinking that's the way forward for developing their business, you got to be the person that's going to lean in towards being proactive and having real communications with people because you're going to have an unfair advantage. Well, they're hoping and praying that the YouTube SEO gods are going to make it so that yeah. somebody actually views their video, let alone somebody who's actually in perspective, you're going to, you know, maybe do business with them. that's going to view their video. That takes a lot of work. I mean, Julie and I've been you know, working on our YouTube channel for the last maybe three months, and we're having some success with it. But let me tell you, it's a lot of work developing a really good YouTube channel, which is going to start getting, you know, a view, let alone hundreds of thousands of views. There's a, a ridiculous of amount of effort that goes into it. Not just our effort too, but Julie and I have a full-time uh, team member that focuses on it as well. It's crazy. Now, w if we are in real estate, would we have a YouTube channel? We would. But would we be uh, pinning our hopes and our future on a YouTube channel? No, we would not because it's oversaturated. If you go and, for example, you're an agent and you want to specialize in the Green Acres subdivision, go to YouTube right now and act as if you were a consumer, a seller, or a buyer, and you're looking for information on that particular subdivision, whatever it is, subdivision or neighborhood or community that you're invested in. And then go to see how many different agents have created content. Now go on Google and do the same thing. You're going to find that there are billions and billions and billions of search results around that, not to mention the big dogs, the, the Zillas and the Realtor.coms. They're going to make it so that the, the effectiveness of whatever you create digitally is going to be really very low. And it's just going to get worse because there's more and more people that are going to create more and more digital content. Now, if someone's knocking on your door and they're there letting you know about something that's going on in the market that's going to have uh, some value to you because it's going to have a positive effect on their, frankly, their net worth, right? That's going to be somebody who immediately sets themselves apart. So the more people that are rushing to digital communication, to passive lead generation, to all that CRM type stuff, the more agents that flock to that, 
the more you need to go in the opposite direction because nobody else is there. You will have no competitors when you're out in the field doing the real proactive lead generation work, especially now, especially when everyone else is so reliant on the digital. You guys get it? And the other thing that's cool is these scripts and door knocking, for example, and a lot of the other things we teach you in Premier Coaching, it's not reliant on anything else other than you. So let's just say, go, leading into YouTube again as an example, you're spending a lot of time creating YouTube videos, and you're believing that that's going to be your way forward. You're going to create such a cacophony of content on YouTube, you're going to be the YouTube Green Acres uh, king or queen, doesn't matter what. Well, guess what happens? YouTube decides to change a couple things on which videos essentially decides to allow consumers to see. Maybe some of your videos aren't as you know perceived as being as valuable as other videos. So you've created hundreds of videos, thousands of tens of millions of videos, but you know, YouTube decides to lean a different direction, giving preference to different types of videos. Maybe they decide that they're not going to start displaying videos that are more than, I don't know, a week old. They have so many to choose from now. There's so many agents that are marketing, doing, you know, YouTube videos for green acres that, you know, we have so many to choose from. Why don't we just show videos that are 30 days old, anything older than 30 days, you know, a needle in a haystack as to, as to whether or not people will ever be able to find it on YouTube. Because the number one place that people, like when you're on YouTube, the thing that gets you, just F, FYI and all this, the thing that's going to get you the most views is YouTube recommending your video. That's it. So when you watch another video and another video pops up, that's YouTube's algorithm deciding what you should see next or suggesting what you should view next. That's where a vast majority of our views on YouTube have come from. That's where yours would come from as well. But we are essentially building, well, we're not relying on YouTube, but this is an example. We're building a mansion on land we don't own. So that we're breaking one of our own rules with the social media stuff. Uh, but again, we're not relying on it. This is just an, an addition to. It's not a, um, a replacement. It's not instead of. Yes, exactly. It's an addition to what we're already doing. It's the same way we suggest all you guys build your businesses as well. Well, you know, YouTube could just decide to, well, you know, we don't want necessarily want to show videos that are, I don't know, uh, published out of Puerto Rico. Who knows what, right? Or longer than 13 and a half minutes long. Exactly. Or, you know, older than seven days but or that's whatever. A, but that's a really valid point. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nowadays... Like because people are so used to watching short videos mm -hmm. because of TikTok and all the right. rest of it. Instagram even has changed. What was um, you know we're talking about social media, but it is I think an interesting thing. Um, Instagram because it's having its ass handed to it by uh, TikTok, mm -hmm. right? Has now decided that it's going to put preference not on pictures, which is what Instagram's all about, but on uh, reels and on videos. So if you're doing a lot of pictures. And you're going to find that Instagram is going to decide to display your pictures to fewer of the people that you've worked so hard to get to follow you. And that just sort of happened. There was no public announcement. It just sort of happened. And uh, the, one of the Kardashians, I think it was Kim Kardashian, and those people, love them or hate them, incredibly uh, very brilliant marketers, straight up brilliant marketers. They've built you know, uh, business. You guys know. I don't have to tell you. Well, guess what? They are now a little bit on their heels. And I mean that, you know, literally because of the fact that they have been building on Instagram, using pictures, and now Instagram is saying we're giving more preference to video. So now they have to start leaning into video. They'll figure it out, I'm sure. But all their old pictures and whatnot aren't going to have the same, you know, essentially value. Now you can, we've known because where Julie and I live in Dorado, Puerto Rico, we know people who are YouTube, uh, you know, Logan Paul and all these other people. We know these people because we live in Puerto Rico. And a lot of them have been very successful off social media. They've made themselves into international celebrities. But and we know these people also are reeling from some of the changes that have happened to YouTube or changes that happened on some of these other social media platforms. You guys get the point I'm making? You, If you build your business on essentially the premise that these media forms are going uh, – media formats – are always going to cause a uh, an uplift to your business. You're making a huge mistake. You're building your mansion on land you do not own. You have to build your business based on proactive lead generation, which a whole generation of agents, anyone that's been in the business for really 15 years uh, or shorter, has never really learned how to be a proactive lead generator. So let me marry all these thoughts together, okay? Because we started talking about door knocking and we meandered into social media. That Your social media posts, especially your videos, should be in support of the real work that you're doing. So, for example, we're not saying don't for, you know, do your YouTube channel. We're not saying don't do that. What we're saying is you can't rely on it. What is the place for your next video? For example, let's say today's a door knocking day. 
I can video myself standing in front of the Green Acres sign talking about, I'm somebody who knows about Green Acres. I'm going to go talk to all of the neighbors. You know, if you're here, I'm going to be here today. Maybe you film the, a picture of the street. You look at yourself. Okay, let's get going on the door knocking. Maybe a five minute or less, something about Green Acres, why it's popular. It's got a neighborhood pool. It's got a clubhouse, whatever. Okay. So then this weekend, you've got an open house in Green Acres. That's fantastic. Now you can do a video inviting people talking about the house in Green Acres with the address on Green Acres. So that by itself, I would not expect to bring you business. However, let's say today I door knocked you and you're in Green Acres and you're wondering, huh, I wonder about that Julie Harris. She seems to have it going on with her stats. And let me just look that up. And that YouTube video pops up about how I know about Green Acres. Well, it's hopefully. in support of. Right. Not instead of, we're not saying don't do it, we're saying don't count on it. It by itself is not a lead generator. It is to support the actual work in real estate. And if you have to choose, you should always choose the face-to-face -face non, I mean, you're not buying leads when you're door knocking, you're not paying referral fees when you're door knocking, you're not having to do some elaborate drip system when you're door knocking. You literally can take a listing today in the neighborhood that you door knock today. And I have had lots of coaching clients have that happen. We're going to talk about some more advanced things to layer on top of door knocking. For example, identifying any home in, say, Green Acres that's expired in the past four or five years up until present, starting with that door knock because that's a more valuable door knock. That person showed that they wanted to sell at some point, and then door knocking around that, knowing about the for sale by owners that are in the neighborhood, making sure that you connect with them, and then door knocking around them. And combining all of these activities into really consistent work that way, if anybody even thinks about selling in Green Acres, you're the only one they're going to think of. And by the way, for those of you who are, you know, overly, you know, you're panicked about the do not call list, or maybe you're up in Canada and there's, you know, all these extra onerous rules about, you know, that type of thing. Well, guess what? There's no such thing as a do not knock list. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned a lot of these guys, I can feel it in the ethos out there. Mm -hmm. They think that somebody's just going to be rude to them or slam the door. That really doesn't happen very frequently. It might happen maybe, let's say you door knock every day this week. It might happen once or twice well, because most people that don't want to be bothered, you know, they don't answer the door. That's right. And furthermore, it's actually, it's kind of a mindset thing more than anything. But when you come across one person that's rude to you, just in general in life, you should say, well, that's my, you know. <laughs> got that over with. Got that over with because it's going to be a numbers game at the end of the day. And this is when you do anything sure. proactive. You're going to have a certain percent, and it's always a small percent of humanity, which are just a little bit off their rockers. They're just cranky. But, and, you know, it's but a tiny them. percent. Right, but forgive them. They're just having yeah. a bad day or just whatever happens. Or maybe they're a full-on sociopath. It doesn't okay. matter. The point is it's going to be one out of 20, one out of 30. And when you run across this person, just kind of laugh to yourself, remember this podcast and say, well, that means I've got another 29 communications with really nice, positive people to look yeah. forward to. I got the jerk out of the way. It really is true, too. I mean, that's that's absolutely – I talk to coaching clients all the time, and, and we talk about the, the, some people think that it's real estate or it's what you're doing in real estate. It's not. It's a numbers game with humanity. That person For that's sure. rude to you at the door is the same person that would cut you off on the freeway, who would ditch you in line at the grocery store, who doesn't sit down when the plane's taking off. It's just like, that's who they are. Get it over with and move on. And fortunately, when you're door knocking, all you have to do is go next door. So what if they're that person? <laughs> well, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> we got nothing for you. If you're the person that that's she just- That's a different coaching program. <laughs> exactly. Well, so listen, uh, I'm going to really drill down on this one last point because I can't get it out of my head. Sure. Uh, don't make the mistake of uh, delivering a bunch of flyers and just assuming that you've had the same, you'll get the same result. You won't. I'm going to say that again. Because this is a mistake I hear about agents making. Yep. They'll do, I'm going to do a bunch of door knocking or I'm going to do circle prospecting or whatever you're going to rationalize. And what they do is they do everything in their power not to have an actual conversation with a potential seller. Yeah, that doesn't count. The it point is count. to actually have conversations. You're not just dropping off flyers, okay? You're knocking on the door. You're trying to have a conversation with people. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to say it. Don't worry. It's easy. By the way, the seller answering the door doesn't know what to say or how to say it either. True. But we're going to give you a conversation outline, a.k.a. a script for the different scenarios, and that's included in Premier Coaching. What is your homework? You guessed it. Join Premier Coaching. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. We're going to be talking about this and drilling down a lot more over the next few podcasts. Make sure you're listening. Make sure you save this podcast. Please do share this podcast or this YouTube video with at least three other agents that you know, love, and care about to help them 
make the most of this market. You guys can build enormous businesses because of this market. Remember, the greatest fortunes of humanity, of men and women, have always been made during the greatest times of change. And that is what we're experiencing right now. So be somebody who's going to come out on the other side of this change that we're going into, this housing shift, this economic shift, being 10x stronger than you were going into it. Make it so that you look past or look back 10 years from now on this time of uncertainty as a time in your life when you made a personal pivot and you've changed the trajectory in a positive way for the rest of your life. That's what this can be for all of you, but you've got to take action, guys. You can't hide out behind your keyboard. You can't just basically worry about your CRM or your drip campaigns. Go out there and do the real work of real estate and you're going to start getting real results. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.